Hey Trailblazers and Tarmac Tacklers, welcome back to the Maximum Mileage Running Podcast. It's the first one of 2024. I am your host, Nick Hancock, USGA and UK Athletics Qualified Coach. And I'm here with... Faye Johnson, uh, also UK Athletics Qualified Coach and Level 4 Personal Trainer. Yeah, and uh, it is the first one of 2024 and um, delighted to be back. We, we had uh, some great feedback from the from the show last year and I have been getting messages from people saying, are you bringing it back? And uh, we are, we're back. Yeah. Better, bigger, uh, well, hopefully bigger than ever. Um, you know, it was just amazing to see how many people were, were listening to it last year. Um, kind of blew my mind how, you know, I only started it really to host the hot seats, right? Yes, exactly. Because yeah. our athletes were saying, oh, you know, watching them back on the Facebook group is nice, but I'd actually quite like to listen to it when I'm on my run. I was like, okay, well, I'll see if I can put it into a podcast format. And here we go. Accidentally ended up with thousands of people listening, which was mind-blowing. And, uh, yeah, people have been asking to bring it back. So um, Yeah, there's yeah. been a lot of um, – I've had a lot of messages from people listening over the Christmas period – um and just really enjoying it and yeah starting from the beginning so they've mm. like done a binge basically on all yeah, the yeah. episodes so yeah yeah it's been mad even though we've been you know we've had a few weeks off over the christmas period uh yeah because i get an email from uh whatever our the hosting thing is i use saying you know 156 people downloaded your podcast this week it's like oh we're not even recording new ones at the moment so that's incredible no. anyway how are you Faye? I'm all right, thank you. I am good. I have just about warmed up from this morning. Um, it was minus five this morning. I know other places are colder, but it was Baltic, really cold. Um, and but yeah, I'm good. I'm uh, I'm feeling quite positive this January. To be fair, it's uh, yeah. you know what was it? Monday was meant to be Blue Monday or something, and they say it's the most depressing day of the year. And I was like, actually. It's pretty good. So, mm. yes. I quite like uh, Mondays because that's the day I check in with all my athletes. So I look forward to Mondays now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mondays are different now. Yeah. Uh, good. Um, how's your training going? What have you got going on? Yeah, good. I am actually still not 100% sure what I'm going to do uh, later in the year. I've got a couple of shorter races early on. so a seven mile race next month, February, uh, which is a new re kind of a new version of winter trail at Coida Brennan. So it's a new thing. Um, so seven miles of like single track forest running, which yeah. should be really fun. And then a local, uh, trail half marathon in March. And then I'm not really sure from then on, to be honest. Um, I have actually entered, I've got a, a, a waiting list place for Man vs. Horse. Mm. Now, I haven't done that race since 2019 when I won it. And mm. I said I would never go back. And then the entries opened, I think it was on the 8th of January. And I thought, why not? So I'm on the waiting list. I'm like fifth on the waiting list. And the chances are someone will okay. back out. So that's in June. Um, but that's about it at the moment. But I'm quite enjoying shorter stuff. I don't, you know, yeah, I'm not missing marathon training. <laughs> no, no, I know you uh, You felt like you needed a break, which, you know, oh, if anybody listen, it's, it's totally fine. Like, sometimes it's good to just have a little break and just run for the fun of it. And, you know, it should always be fun anyway. But, you know, when you are constantly focusing on performance, 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 it can get a little bit old. Yeah, so, and it's yeah, just nice to to look at different races and try other stuff. So yeah, I am trying to convince you now to uh, come and do one of one of the races I'm doing. Um, no, see, I, I think that might be quite nice. It's my birthday weekend, and I think mm. that's a nice way to spend. So I I probably will do that. Yeah, because we yeah. ran the route together last year, didn't we? Just as a bit of a fun pre recce that because um, I did the forty mile version of Limitless Trails. Uh, really good, um, really good outfit in um in and around the wales uh south wales area that do some cracking races i did beast of the beacons yeah. 40 miles which is it's two loops but you go out one way and then you come back um 
come back the other way. And we did that loop. Yes. And it was delightful. And it was, it was a good confidence booster for you because it was kind of that, yeah. it was that moment like, oh my God, I'm, I think I might actually be back from long COVID because you yeah. always had that in your mind, didn't you, until then? Absolutely. You, so that was good. Well that day. Yeah. It was fun. So I think you but should yeah. race it this year. Why not? <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So um, Nick. How are you? And please share with us your latest news. <laughs> uh, well, I'll, I'll share the good news because it's, um, you know, for, for the people who have listened to the show for a while will know that I have some challenges going on with my wife's health. And she told me, do you know what she told me? No. She, she's listened to every episode of the podcast. She's not. I didn't think she would have listened to it because she has pretty much no interest in, in, um, in running at all. So when she said, oh, I, I finished listening to your podcast, I was like, what? You've um, listened? Oh, so now, I love that. So now, now I need to be careful what I say. <laughs> um, but yeah, we did have some shit news, literally, mm. a few days before Christmas that her um, cancer in her brain is uh, started to show that it's maybe coming back. So she's on a new drug now. But um, the last few weeks have been pretty good, actually. She's in terms of physically, she seems amazing. Like, you know, the, the new drug isn't kicking her ass like the other drug was um she was starting to get quite tired and a little bit feeling sick all the time mm. so so yeah we we stay positive and uh yeah we've got some great things planned for this year um and yeah i've got uh um yeah a bit, bit of good news uh i know you know we have been critical of um of utmb on the show we have had our thoughts on some of the things going on with it but do you know what with everything I've got going on in my life at the moment, um, you know, for us, I got into CCC, uh, the 100K at UTMB weekend, which um, whether you like UTMB or not, I don't really care because it's going to be an amazing family adventure. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and that's the only thing I'm sort of looking at at the moment, you know, if all you've got to worry about in your life is worrying about um, UTMB being sponsored by Dacha, then you're probably doing quite well. And I um, will confess, peeps. <laughs> I will confess, I drive a Dacia, you so, do. you know. Huh, you have had you it know. since before. Um, oh, God, yeah. I've had it a, a while so. before they, you know, agreed to their partnership. But, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we've, yeah, we've got that. I, I've, I Actually, I have quite an exciting year of racing going on. Um, I've got a secret race in two weeks that I'm keeping a secret because I've just kind of <laughs> signed up to it at the last minute. Oh um, dear. Uh, so yeah, I've done I've done Brecon to Cardiff twice in, in the past. Uh, 20, 2020, 2022, I was ninth and fourth respectively. Um, both years were biblical storms, and now two years on, the trend continues. We seem to be in the midst of because another storm is coming. So I'd be surprised yeah. if it's not going to be biblical again. But this time, mm. I've signed up to the the new version of the course where instead of it going right down the Taft Trail all the way to Cardiff, um, it goes up and over Penavan, Cribbin, Fanny Big, which everybody laughs at. I can't help but laugh at the name Fanny Big. Um, uh, and then it comes down back onto the Taft Trail and then goes back out into kind of the Abernant Forest, which I ran some of the other day. Some challenging climbs, but very runnable downhills. So yeah. I've got that in a couple of weeks just because I thought, Fuck it, why not? Um, I've got Beast of the Blacks, Beast of the Beacons, both doing the twenty milers as kind of tune up races. Um I'm gonna see how I get on at Wokingham Half, probably not gonna run that particularly hard. When is that again, Nick? That's in that's in a month's time, that is. So that's oh, like right. that's like okay. two uh it's three weeks after Brecon to Cardiff, so I'm probably not gonna be running that particularly hard and fast. Mm. Um, and then I've got UTS 100K, oh, yes. Lakeland yes. 50, and CCC all in the space of um, May, July, August. So super excited about all of that. That's mm. some good, um, good racing to do, some prestigious races in terms of their stature and uh, really looking forward to Lakeland, actually. And um, yeah, as I say, they, they kind of come with some good family adventures with We'll take we'll take the camper van and uh, yeah make make some memories as well. So, yeah. Absolutely. And on the subject of weather, 
Yes, mm. it was minus, minus five this morning, and I put on Instagram. Oh, yes. I became one of those ice ice bath wankers and put a video of me getting in the ice bath. But I had to this morning because it was like a, a one inch thick layer of ice on it, and uh, it was very nice. And it's amazing how many people like watching videos of people getting in ice baths. <laughs> like I don't get Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Like, cool. So uh, so yeah, I was, yeah, I've been quite enjoying the ice bath actually. And before anybody goes, oh, you know, what was he getting in the ice bath for? For me, like I I know full well that the the science around ice baths is a bit sketchy. Um, does it benefit recovery? Does it hamper adaptations? You know, maybe, yes, no, don't know. Nobody really cares. Um, mm. But what it does for me, particularly with things going on in our personal life, is it's for me it's three or four minutes in the morning where I have to empty my mind and just concentrate mm. on on breathing, which massively helps my anxiety, which absolutely, quite honestly, has been ferocious recently. Ferocious. Um, so it, and anything it you can do to help that um, yeah. is worth doing, whatever you know, whatever the science is, you know. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, um, so yeah. I, yeah, I came back from my run and I got in a hot bath. So I did the complete opposite. So I got in a hot bath with Epsom salts and loved it. Because who doesn't love a weekday bath? <laughs> <laughs> but the, the thing is, though, is that actually we, we, we are pretty sure that the evidence of getting into a warm bath helps with recovery because it helps with blood flow. It opens up arteries yeah. and capillaries and all that kind of stuff and gets more blood circulating around. Um, still debatable about the Epsom salt thing, but... Just smells nice. Yeah. And want, it makes it you... It makes your skin baby soft, so, you know. (laughs) There you go. Um, I wanted to uh, just call out some of the lovely people that leave us uh, nice reviews because it's always nice to get reviews, and I'd never really looked at them before. So I've decided that if anybody wants to leave us a lovely five-star review, I'll read them out on on the podcast. So um, here we go. this one was from Chris, five star, um, real podcast for real runners. Thank you, Chris. Uh, a great podcast that is aimed at real runners discussing real and relative issues along the way. Well worth a listen with a thumbs up and runner emoji. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, that was kind of part of the point. You know, whilst I have had, um, you know, we've, we've chatted with the likes of Beth Pascal and, and Holly Stables, um, although Holly's about as real as, as you can get, yeah. even though, you know, she would. Yeah, you know, we would class her as elite. Um, you know, we're gonna to listen to Andy talking in a bit. Andy Grant, who yeah. is one of my runners, he's been with me for a couple of years and you know, he's about as real as it gets. His story is fantastic. Um his mindset around how he uh how he's dealt with weight loss and weight gain and some of the troubles that kind of come with that uh, is quite inspirational. So um looking forward to everybody listening to him after we're done jibber jabbering. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, thank you, Chris. Really appreciate that review. Um, coaching tip of the week, Faye. Yes. What are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about um, the the long run. The long run, yes. And, you know, yeah, uh, how it becomes quite this enigma in people's training. Um, and it can be quite daunting. It can be for some quite exciting and great but it is it just has it it carries a lot of emphasis Hmm. and it's something that I think and I've noticed with some of the people I coach it doesn't it doesn't benefit everybody for various different reasons Hmm. which we'll we'll talk about but I think yeah there's a lot to discuss around the long run Hmm. yeah I mean it's something I've been I've spoken about it quite a few times, and it's actually covered in the USCA Ultra Running Certification um, by by Jason Coop, who um, who wrote uh, along with Ukesa USCA wrote the uh, the course, and you know we've heard Camille Heron talking about it um, yes. quite recently. You know, from a you know she's a bone health scientist, and she comes mm-hmm. at it from a bone health perspective, particularly for females, um, and it is easily other than what should i eat before a run it is yeah. easily the most <clears throat> common question i get asked 
what will the, the, the length of my longest run be or how long should my longest run be for you know x race that i'm doing and particularly in like the ultra marathon world it's almost like it's been taken from the marathon world where traditionally people will run up to 20 22 miles which is yeah. pretty much what i have my my runners doing when they're doing a marathon and it gets translated into oh well if a marathon is 26 miles and i'm doing a 100 miler race and if i was doing a marathon it would be a 20 mile long run therefore yeah. surely like my longest run for a for a 100 miler must be a you know 80 <laughs> miles <laughs> no. no don't do it to yourself no no not at all um you know there's there's good evidence that shows that we are when we start going past that kind of 20 22 mile ish mark for for most of us normal human beings um you know we start to think about muscle breakdown um you know the catabolic response from 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 running um and actually yeah the the benefit of doing the long 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 run you know we're talking sort of 50k and upwards is negated by the need to recover from it absolutely because i think sometimes it's forgotten i don't not that i'm saying people approach long runs you know and not think much of them but sometimes i think people have this expectation that well i have to go and do this long run and then next week i'm straight you know i'm into another a training week when the impact of that long run on you physically and mentally needs time yeah. afterwards to recover from so it's no you know it's no mean feat doing this but you do always have to be mindful of you know how you re- recover from that long run and, yeah, and the impact that it has yeah, hundred percent, and I think that's that's the thing with the kind of people that we work with, and you know, I would assume most of the people that are listening to this um, podcast. You know, I can't imagine Killian John A is listening, or or Courtney DeWalter, or never you know. know. Yeah, you never know, but um, <laughs> you know, for, we, we can't be out doing you know no. 50, fifty milers on a on a Sunday because we've got a hundred mile race coming up. Exactly. Then, you know, you go out and do a fifty mile run, and then you got to look after the kids. Because the kids are crawling all over you, and or, or you know, in my case, my wife wants to go shopping in town. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. I've just done a fifty mile run. I can't, <laughs> I can barely walk. You know, so yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah, it just negates the, um, negates the benefits. But also, what about the rest of your week? Yeah, like ultra, ultra certainly ultra marathon success, and even marathon success. And I've coached people to, um, to very successful marathons. I had a woman I was coaching last year called Alison, uh, Alison Graham. She uh, is a, a V60, never run a marathon in her life. She's a very yeah. good runner, but she's never mm. run a marathon in her life. The longest run that we did for her tilt at Manchester Marathon yeah. was 14.5 miles. And she was second in the country, V60. Uh, yeah. she, she ran a 333. And Absolutely probably could have gone amazing. Slightly faster. But yeah. the, the thing that we did was that. Uh, you know, first of all, she said, I just don't have the time to do the long runs. But also she was worried about, you know, a little bit of an older woman, worried yeah. about the, the, the need for recovery. Um, and we just put more of the focus. And this is kind of where I'm going out with this is focus more on training volume over time rather yes. than being so focused on, oh, I must do a, you know, X amount long run four weeks before my race because that isn't how it works. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I've been having these exact conversations with a couple of my runners. One time, they don't ha- always have the time and their plans and their work commitments can change. Um, and also, they don't react, respond well to the long run. Um, and they, they respond much better to consistency. And as you say, thinking about training load over a longer period and how we can build that up over time rather than as you say putting all the eggs into that long run basket and then being and then potentially it becoming quite a stressful event Mm. (laughs) because you know it can then give you the wrong it could give you a bit of a confidence knock if it doesn't go well for whatever reason and that's not going to do you any good for you know preparation for the for the race so there's lots of factors to think about and I think at the end of the day people have lives and as much as we might love running we're all very aware that 
as you made the point of, we don't have the time to be, you know, going out for hours on, you know, one of two days off a week or, you know, there's so many things to consider. Yeah. For, for me, the biggest thing is that recovery part afterwards. Yeah. You know, some people might say, well, I do have six, seven, eight, ten hours to go and run. But, you know, what, what have you got the day and the day after that? Probably um, got to go to work. Yeah, you probably got to go to work. Probably got, you know. probably got stuff going yeah. on. So, um, so you know, here, there, there are some of the reasons why, you know, people get surprised when I say the longest run that you'll probably do, uh, a training run, even for a 100 miler with me, is 22 mm. miles, roughly. Yeah. Now, that will come with, okay, so you'll do that 22 miler, and then the next day it might be that we'll do a 15 miler, 18 yeah. miler, 12 miler, whatever it might be. So you get a little bit of that back-to-back, um, you know, benefit. Um, but one of the best ways, I think, if um, – because, you know, there will be the people listening go, well, sure, surely, you know, you can't go into something like a 100 miler having not done some sort of really long run from some of the mental benefit that it gives you. Yeah. And I would agree with that. But I think one of the best ways to do that is instead of out there on your own, on a training run, trying to, trying to slug out a 50 mm. miler, for example, plan <clears throat> in a tune-up race where you are in a controlled environment where you've got you know potentials for crew aid stations uh all, all of that kind of stuff so um and and actually it's a planned event rather than just yeah. some random sunday where you've got to you know explain to your your other half that you know you've got to go out and do some crazy long run um you know and you're in a race setting i i, I think yeah. that that can be really beneficial Absolutely. It, it takes the pressure off you and as well. Like you say, it's not fun if you've got a, it can be, but it's difficult to go out and run 22 miles on your own, um, your own back. And, you know, like you say, to have a race setting gives you so many benefits and makes it far less stressful. Hmm. I'm thinking, you know, if, if you did want to do, you know, if, you, if there was an athlete saying, oh, well, you know, I really feel like I should do, you know, a 50 K, 40 mile long run that's okay but do that in a race setting do that in, yeah. a, in a in a more organized fashion where because you're not just going to be thinking about that time on feet you're also going to be thinking right i'm going to recover properly after this race you Absolutely. Know, work, work with your coach on what your recovery protocol should be so that you know when we do come to start training again you know in, in a few days time it's done in a controlled manner rather than just trying to squeeze in 40 miles as part of your long run. Yeah, absolutely. And also the other side of it as well, preparing for that long run, because you're far more likely to prepare yourself on the days leading up to a race Mm -hmm. than you are a long run. I think sometimes, like I said, you become a little bit blasé about that long run. And it's like, oh, I've got to go out and do this. But if it's a race, you do. You automatically yeah, yeah. think more about, you know, that those days leading up, like uh, your your fuel, your your um, hydration. You know, you just think about it much more. And I think yeah, that's another good way, reason. Yeah, yeah, hundred yeah, percent. So there you have it, folks. Our coaching tip for the week: stop focusing so much on your on the length of your longest run because really, it's inconsequential in the, the the you know the terms of your entire training over time because you, you think of it this way as well six months worth of training yeah is it going to make that much difference if you do another two hours worth of running on a long run no not really not really think about the bigger picture always keep think about the bigger picture and the work you've done and the work you might have to come yeah. you know yeah yeah um Yep, so that's it. Um, before we get into the episode with Andy, just a quick shout out to our partners, um, Runderwear. I've been working with them now personally as an ambassador for the last four years, actually. Uh, in fact, it was four years this month. Um, I've been wearing their stuff even way before that. So um, I, I you know, love Runderwear stuff. So, uh, and Jufe, you had a you had a bra fitting with them, didn't you? I did. I wear, I've got a couple of their bras. They are fantastic. And funnily enough, I discovered, I think that was six months ago now, mm. that my, my, my bra, sports bra size was completely wrong. 
fair play i'm bigger than i thought (laughs) so i'm like win um so that was exciting but they are really good and then i also have been using the um anti-chafe longer shorts and the reason being just as a quick mention i find i usually when the weather's really cold i do wear tights because it's it's just feels better but the long anti-chafe short i don't so much wear for the anti-chafe effect but more for the keeping my top of my legs warmer mm-hmm. um especially in the colder weather or the wet weather but i cannot re- recommend those enough they are they just fit like a dream um and i'm i was never really a big fan of stuff like that before i tried those so yeah i would absolutely recommend those yeah cool um yeah, not so this like sounds like you know we're we're doing some sponsored ad thing because we're not paid by no, any, any not of these at companies all. at all. By the way, anybody who's listening, no. um, but I like wearing underwear boxer shorts because they stop it from looking like a murder scene down there after a race. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, shout oh. out to uh, shout out to Talk Energy as well. Talk Fitness. Uh, they've been keeping me fueled for a long time. Um, you know, I always say you've got to be. Uh, you know, nutrition is very, very personal. Um, so, you know, talk might not work for everybody, but they certainly work for me. And I love the flavors, particularly the lemon drizzle gel. Um, yeah, I love them. Um, Soulmate in Merthyr. I actually went there. The yes. Day, and I saw Woo. Paul and, and I bought a pair of shoes in the shop. Um, it, isn't, it, isn't, it isn't just a shop in in little Merthyr in South Wales. They are online. So um Great little family business. Yes. Paul, the owner, is lovely. Very, very knowledgeable. Very, very helpful. And they didn't try and sell me support shoes, which I was delighted about. No, never. They no won't. Because they, that. yeah, absolutely. That absolutely fantastic shop run by an absolutely outstanding couple. And yeah, they're doing great things in the community. They've got a, a, just a, a little mention. They've got a great um, social running group as well that meets on a Tuesday. That all started off the back of um, Mental Health Awareness Week last year. I worked with them to start that and to like, you know, nearly a year on. And they sometimes got up to like 30, 40 people turning up on a Tuesday night. So amazing. So good for the town. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, To start coffee. And I've been drinking my maybe fourth cup today. Um, yeah, True Start Coffee, based in Bristol, lovely company, um, make excellent coffee that um, doesn't have some of the side effects that some people... Um, uh, would you you feel some of the side effects of drinking coffee sometimes, don't you? Oh, something chronic. And this, with the True Start, and again, I, I, I discovered them. I kind of mentioned it to you, Nick, didn't I, when mm. I found it? And yeah. I loved it because you don't get the nasty, jittery side effects. And I often drink their lower caffeinated coffee yeah. because it's enough for me. And I don't get that hideous crash that I get with some coffee. So, um, yeah. yeah, definitely recommend that. Yeah. And then finally, um, Ugoku Projects. Um, I actually coach Daryl, who owns um, Ugoku Projects. And for those of you watching on the video, these lovely hats that are hanging on my wall here. They make the best trail running hats. Fuck CL and all of those brands. Ugoku projects. They are amazing. Um, thank you, Faye, showing them off as well. Um, anyway, uh, I didn't want that to sound like some big ad thing because we're not paid by any of these companies. No. We, just like, we just like working with them. And it just so happens that they are very kind enough to give us some, some discounts. Um, and if anybody is listening, wants to join the Maximum Mileage Running Podcast Facebook group. So if you just search Maximum Mileage Running Podcast on Facebook, join the group and you can avail some of the discounts with those lovely suppliers. So uh, lovely, lovely companies. Uh, And with that, let's have a listen to Andy. Absolutely. Cheers, Faye. Cheers, Nick. Bye. Hello, Andy. How are you doing? Yeah, good. Thank you, Nick. How are you? I'm right now. I've figured out what the hell I'm doing on this uh, podcasting platform. Only five five minutes. Yeah, that's not too bad. Uh, For everybody listening, this is the first time I've used this podcasting platform. Normally, I've just recorded on Zoom in the past, but somebody recommended I upgrade my game i said i was bringing a better podcast into 2024 so i thought i'd use a proper podcasting platform but i've been sat here like a cow with a pitchfork 
trying to work out what to do. <laughs> anyway, how are you, Andy? Yeah, re- yeah, really good. Thank you, Nick. Yeah, yeah, yeah good. Uh, how have you been? Yeah, good. It's 2024. You're the first guest on the Maximum Mileage Running podcast. And, um, honored. Uh, well, uh, yeah, we, we've talked about this, um, before getting you on. And, you know, I, I wanted to get you on because you have quite a story, um, about how you got into running, what it's done for you, kind of what you've done, you know, with your health in general, both physically and mentally. And I thought people need to hear this, really, because it's, um, it's pretty awesome what you've done. Thank you. Yeah. To tell us yeah, what have you done. <laughs> Well, how far back do we want to go? <laughs> um, um, I suppose I should give a bit of a background. So, mm. um, um, obviously, you know, um, I'm what 42 years old. Um, when I was um, 15, I was actually diagnosed with uh, chronic fatigue syndrome after having a some type of virus. They never actually worked out what I had, but. Um, which really knocked my immune system and energy levels um, right down. I ended up missing more of my last year in high school than I actually was in high school, um, but somehow managed to uh, still walk out with fairly decent GCSEs, which I'm quite <laughs> pleased about. Um, I then decided to take a year out, and I've always been quite a tennis player, so I've played tennis since I was about the age of four. Um, but other than tennis, I didn't really play, do any other sports. I was never interested with running. I was always of the belief I was not a runner whatsoever. Um, and yeah, so sort of that year out, I just was focused on my health really a little bit then, you know, building up my energy levels. And part of that was one of the things that the sort of the doctors suggested was trying to just do as much activity as I could when I could. So I played a, quite a bit of tennis, which um gradually built up my fitness and energy levels again and yeah went off to college and university and sort of was fine for most of my life i've always probably been a slightly heavier person than i would probably should be or want to be um and um because you're, you're a big dude like you're, you're you're tall and uh yeah i'm just over six foot so i'm six foot one um i'm quite wide built so i'm quite broad in terms of upper body my legs have always been i've cycled i used to cycle a lot so i've always had fairly decent sized quads and calves um and and probably playing tennis helped with that as well um but uh, yeah i didn't really have any really real endurance fitness (laughs) at all probably um but yeah got to the stage where was this 2018 i think i was probably at my I was definitely the heaviest I've ever been. I was up to about 118 kg. Um, so 118. Like 118, yeah. Wow. Um, so what was that? Like 16 and, and like 18 and a half stone, something like that. Yeah. So I was a big guy. <laughs> um, there's pictures now that I look back when I was, when Dorina and I got married. And uh, yeah, I can't quite believe I was that big, really. Um, and uh, my best mate basically said to me at the time, you need to do something because like if you don't do something about it soon you're not who knows what's going to happen to you later in life i suppose that was one comment and then Dorina one night Dorina's my wife by the way um and she said to me one night i was you know cuddling her in bed you had my arm over her back and she literally turned around to me and said can you take your arm off it's too heavy i struggle i can't breathe properly and i think that was the real wake up call that I really needed to do something about it. Um, so, like, you know, I started focusing more on what I was eating, focused much more on, like, getting, making sure I'm getting enough protein, that sort of stuff, um, lots of healthy food, um, and, you know, little and often cutting out. I used to live on two to three litres of Coke a day, mm. uh, never drank water. I was always tired, even though I drank that much Coke <laughs> and that amount of caffeine and amount of sugar, because it was full fat Coke as well. Um, so probably on was... like a, a, a cyclical sugar crash. Yeah, yeah. So I was literally always shattered. Um, and one of the things I was always told, with, and, and it brings me back to the chronic fatigue a little bit, in terms of it's something apparently you never lose. 
So chronic fatigue syndrome is the same as uh, ME. It's just like a new term for it. Um, and so it's something you never really lose. It's always underlying. So you have to manage what you do. Um, and I think I'd try to live off of Coke because it was the one way of sort of giving me a bit of a lift that I needed um, at times. And, but, you know, like, you know, I run my own garden maintenance company, so I'm a fairly active guy. Um, I think it helps with a lot of the longer running stuff, which we'll talk about later. Yeah, um, work. But, yeah. And, um, but, you know, I used to, I lived on rubbish absolute rubbish like i wouldn't eat breakfast i'd get up have a cup of tea get out the door come 10 o'clock crashing time go and grab a cornish pasty or something like that you know from service stations lunch would probably normally be like a sandwich with some crisps and more coke and mid-afternoon you'll want something sweet so then that'd be like a danish pastry or something like that and then uh yeah dinner would be like pasta or something like that and then my wife, being Romanian, she likes to feed. Um, and when she first moved over here, she did not have an idea about portion control. So she would like put the whole of the pack of pasta in the, <laughs> and cook the whole thing of pasta. And, you know, I was brought up to not want to waste food. <laughs> so I would eat and then like she would have put on the same amount of food on her plate as mine. So then she'd end up putting her stuff on my plate and I would eat it. And yeah, just like. It's amazing how over a long period of time, how you can put on weight without really realizing you're putting on. Um, because you don't see it. You no. can't see it yourself. No, um, so unless you look, so gradual, yeah. isn't it? And that's why, like, whenever you're, do, you know, if you're ever doing anything where you're trying to lose weight or you're trying to do anything like that, taking photos and, and gradually seeing that, they're, they're so much better than looking at scales because scales only tell you one thing. But photos really tell you the true picture because you can really see it because, you know, especially now with like working with you, you know, you're very into doing your strength training and weight training. So, you know, if you don't do a lot of that, you're going to start building a bit of muscle. And if you're losing muscle and, and, and fat, you, you may actually not lose a lot of weight on the scales, but your composition of your body can be completely change. Um, and, you know, these sort of things happen. and. Um, so I decided in 2018 to do that. So um, started losing weight. Didn't, still didn't run. Just played a bit of tennis. Still carried on playing tennis, um, and uh, did a bit of hit workout that sort of stuff to what, build what, up. And what weight were you in 2018? What did what did you get to? So um... 2018, I was 118, uh, 118 kg. Oh, so that, that was when you were 118. That was then. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, by the end of the year, I'd got dropped down i'd lost like two stone in a year um and then yeah before i started running i was down to my, my uh, about 90 kg so i'd lost like four and a half stone something like that so 118 uh, down to 90 90 yeah yeah nice. um that uh, uh, a reasonable amount has gone back on in the last few months um i won't lie um i've got back up to about 104 kg at the moment um, and we'll talk about, I think, the reasons why that is a bit later after we talk a bit but more about running um, and bits and pieces. It's, it's a bit of a more recent journey. Um, so, yeah. So two years later, obviously, we all know what happened in 2020. Um, we won't mention it. <laughs> it is so weird. I, I, I still look back at that time and go, did we really have to stay at home? And we were only allowed to go out for a run for an hour a day? Not that, I know, I, not that I yeah. stuck to an hour, but <laughs> I know it's crazy, isn't it? But that, but that was a changing of my life. I think you know that's where everything changed for me. Uh, in a lot of senses, obviously, I had one turnaround in 2018, but really my next one and where I suppose my true passion, I suppose, in life now feels like it is anyway. Um, started really. Um, my wife was always a keen runner. She always used to like to run. She used to do 5Ks quite regularly. Um, funny enough, she doesn't run anymore. <laughs> um, She's got, and, got a great time uh, for all of your running. Well, yeah, yeah, that's it. And um, she, she uh, yeah, so she, I think basically she went, she decided when we first went into lockdown 
and that was all we were allowed to do was go out for like half an hour, an hour's exercise. She was going to go out for a run, um, and uh, I was going to walk the dog with her behind her. But the dog had different minds and decided she wanted to run with Darina. So I sort of ran after her. And yeah, managed, I think on that very first run, I managed about 4K, huffing and puffing and hating right. every moment of it. Yeah, I was quite, I was quite pleased. Yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, I came out to 4K yeah. on the first one. I think I got to 0.4K yeah. when uh, I did my, <laughs> my first ever run. But, but I actually hated it. I, I, you know, while I was running it, I actually hated it. But then it was like afterwards, it was how I felt afterwards and the energy levels that I felt I had. And the difference I felt then, um, I was like, actually, this isn't too bad. And then a few days later, we went out, did my first 5K, still hated it, still was huffing and puffing. Um, and then gradually took it from there, I think. Uh, so that was what, when did we go? And May time, was that? So April, May, mm. we were put in lockdown. And then I ran my sort of like first, March. I just Mar- gradually March ran 20- more. March the twenty third. March the yeah. twenty third. I, I think. It. I think my first actual run was about end of April, beginning of May of that year. Yeah. Um, and then just gradually increased it, running up and down the canal um, here in Aylesbury. Um, and uh, yeah, by uh, in September, I think I ran my first half marathon. Um, and then as a distance or an actual as a distance no no not as a race as a distance yeah were we allowed to race in 2020 <laughs> oh I, I think i think at one point rishi sunak was trying to get everybody pissed and eating pizzas wasn't he would they eat out to help out whatever it was. oh that was it yeah, some, yeah, yeah, yeah some races started happening started again happening. in 2020 yeah. but and then we all went back in lockdown for christmas didn't we yeah and um yeah then um one of my friends basically said to me, oh, you're, like, you're really enjoying this run- running. Why didn't you do uh, um, the Brighton Marathon? So uh, I signed up for that, which was in 2021. Mm-hmm. But it was in the September because they moved them, didn't they? They moved them all because of um, lockdowns and stuff. So they moved it to September. So it's I ran hot, first. wasn't it? It was a hot one. Yeah. yeah. I had a mate with me who, uh, who, who was a faster runner than me. Um, and he actually, you know, the bit you you you, you did wasn't bright in your first one as well. It was my first one. Is it, I don't know what it is. We all go, oh yeah, I've done a five k. Let's go and do the Brighton Marathon. Um, yeah, um, it was exactly the same. It was yeah in the day I did it as well. And obviously they changed the route now. They they've taken out the lovely industrial estate. Um, but that that was uh, in there. My mate was coming around there and he collapsed mm. uh, from heat exhaustion. Luckily, right by the. Uh, uh, St John's ambulance section that was there. It, it was like, like Day of the Living Dead in the uh, in the in the industry of the state when I did it. Literally, yeah, like yeah. people like zombies trying to find water. <laughs> I uh, in that place in on that one. It's quite. A, I've done it twice, both times on speed bumps in that section. I've tweaked calves, and I think I tweaked my hamstring in in there as well. Yeah, and it's like it's like yeah, it's horrible. Yeah, I'm pleased like, um, we changed it. <laughs> I, I turned my ankle quite early on, about three miles in. I mean, that didn't cause me any issues. It was the heat that killed me. But yeah, yeah Brighton's a Brighton's a funny one. I wouldn't go back to do Brighton again. No. Personally, no. great great one. Now you know it's run by London Marathon events. Yeah. Same people that do the London Marathon. It's a new route. It's more exciting. It's less hilly. Um, yeah, you haven't got that soul destroying mile. 21 to 24 i think it is in the industrial estate with where there's it's no when it is. Yeah. There, were, there were no human beings in there no no it's it, and it's miserable it's not even nice to look at no not at all you can't see the beach nothing no, no it's not like when you're running out like that's the other bit that i find difficult that run out all the way to is it westbourne you know yeah, up to yeah, the, yeah. The, the um eastbourne. the golf club and uh no, yeah, but you don't go that far for that direction, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You go up to, and there's that windmill and stuff like that. You run all the way out, and you, you're looking, you know you've got miles and miles to go, and then and you know you've got to turn around and then come all the way down it. So, yeah. um, for anybody uh, listening, you, know, you don't have to do all that on the bottom of the now, so don't be scared. Oh, they scrapped all that, have they? Yeah, yeah, no, there's none of that there I mean, now. It's a totally different route. It's, uh, it's much, oh, well. much less oh. hilly and annoying. That's nice, but I won't go back. 
No. <laughs> We've got other th- we've got other things to do now. We have, of course. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yes, yeah, so I did that, and then um, yeah, and then sort of, I suppose I I really quite enjoyed it. I, you know, I'm not fast. I'm not a fast runner particularly. Um, but you know, like I think one thing that I would probably say that I'm okay at is is the mental side of it in terms of just pushing through when things get tough um you know and bright i think brighton was a good example of that a bit like you know when when i did my hamstring on that first one it's my first longest run i've ever done uh got to that stage you know around mile 20 when we you hit that proverbial wall and i think the hamstring went the mindset went i rang my uh my wife uh, uh, on my head on my um thing and i was like i can't do this <laughs> And I did exactly the same thing. Said, just get it done. <laughs> yeah, I did exactly the same thing. It doesn't mind. matter how long it takes you, just finish it. Yeah, I don't like this. This is rubbish. I want to go home. She's like, you yeah. better get it. She was, yeah. Alison was seven months pregnant at the time. She said, you better get your fucking ass moving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, um, it was, yeah, so uh, it pushed me through it and I got, you know, I've got a lot to uh, be grateful for her for, really, in terms of she's always there to support me on those long runs, which, you know, I think, as you probably know, you can't do a lot of this without having a, de- uh, a very supportive partner at times and very understanding partner as well. Yeah. Do you know, if you don't mind, I'd like to stay on the subject of Darina, actually, because um, I'm sure you've learned some things okay. from what she does in her day job because she's a foot specialist right yeah yeah so she does um so she's you know so she's a um she does um nails (laughs) so she does the manis but she's also actually a specialist she specializes actually now yeah so she specializes now in um sort of feet work um um and i have you know I'm sure we'll talk more about Race of the Stones that I did last year um, later. And, and But I have a lot to be grateful for, for fixing my feet up after those. Um, um, and, yeah, so basically she does, she, she she helps look after people's feet who, and dare I say it, a lot of people do not look after their feet properly. <laughs> Some well, of the I stuff mean, I've seen. No, no, no more know, than us. How do you let yourself get to that stage? Yeah. Yeah. No. No more. No. No more than. Like, uh, so, like, like the cracking, the dra- lot. No. 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 You don't see that many black males, I must admit. <laughs> Not on normal people. No. No. Uh, I think our uh, our reception went a little bit then, but um, yeah, I was going to say because oh, yeah. yeah, she yeah she she patched you up after Race of the Stones. Um, have you, have you learned any tips? from her that you can yeah, pass did. on to the listeners just more so in terms of obviously really looking after your feet um so keeping them keeping them dry as best you can um but also like in the day to day is like keeping them well moisturized don't let them get too dry and don't let your skin the skin get too hard um especially like in one sense, like I I sometimes argue that um, I think you know like I like a bit of callousing on my feet, like because I feel like they they take a bit more of a bat, bat uh, sort of battering. They can cope with it a bit more than being very very soft. Um, but you definitely you know, and it's then things like making sure your your footwear's right sizes, and yeah, and 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 as we know. Like when you start running longer and longer, your feet swell up um, or can do um, as you get hotter. So it's important to have that space um, to expand into. Because a lot of the people, like a lot of the, the people she deals with, are people who have things like corns and um, calluses, really bad calluses on their toes and the way then their feet and the toes are growing in. And it's all about people not wearing the right size shoes um and you know if you can if we can have our feet you know you don't want your toes going over your other toes and some people do because of the fact that they you know squeeze their feet into smaller shoes than they should be or not wide enough feet 
issues. Mm. Um, so the big, yeah, the big thing is she, she'll, she'll every now and then, probably once every couple of months, she'll grind down my. <laughs> she did it the other day, actually. Folks, I said, I said, yeah, I, I said to her, but, for everybody yeah. listening, I know this is all a bit gross, but blisters, issues with your feet is one of the biggest causes of DNS in ultra marathons. Yeah. Blisters and GI issues. So whilst this is a bit of a gross thing, yeah, a lot of people don't like feet and talking about feet, but you've got to look after your feet. Like you've got to look after them. People think, oh yeah, if you let let that hard callus area um, keep it there, but actually, what happens over time is that while you're running, the hard callus area rubs on the soft skin underneath and creates blisters underneath the callus, and it's actually worse. <laughs> And also, if the calluses get too big and too hard, it becomes very painful as well mm. on that as well. So it's making sure that you it's getting that the balance right. Um, and you know, like it's part of the reason I know Nick, we talked about it when um, at the time when I did race the stones. It's like part of the reason why t- the last I can't remember how far it was, but um, was my feet. I just got one massive blister on both my feet, right on the balls of my feet, which was absolute agony. And probably on another day, I could have easily just said, I'm not going to finish this. But I just, you know, it's like, like, as I said, it's one of those things. It's like, I don't care about the time. Just get it done. It, that, especially when you're doing your first one of that, of, of a distance. I always, my personal belief is, unless you're going to die, <laughs> Like just try and if you can if you can get it done get it done because yeah. once you know you don't do it you then also then have you've got you learn from it and that you know race of stones is probably I think I've learned more about myself and about what I need to do in the future when I do you know when I do that you know in terms of fueling in terms of I should have changed my socks I should have changed shoes. Yeah, you know, it was a bit biblical on that day a couple so of times. Yeah, you, yeah, you did get a bit unlucky with the weather um, yeah. last year because it had been the weather had been pretty nice for quite a while. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you'd done all your training in the warm weather, and even on the day, yeah. the the forecast was a little bit sketchy Up as to what was going to yeah. happen, and um, and then it was like properly biblical, wasn't it? For yeah, so I start. I think it's like yeah, two. I think the first, the, uh, we were running for about an hour, and then literally thunder and lightning storm. <laughs> uh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it was lit, to, and it was seriously heavy rain as well. There's, uh, we've got a video that Serena's taken of her sta- uh, sitting in the car, waiting for me to come to one of the uh, passing points from her, and it, <laughs> You can't see out. It's like literally just like I remember a sheet seeing that. Of water yeah, coming yeah. down. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it was one of those things where it's like, it's like I got so wet so quickly. It's like, what's the fucking point of taking a uh, a waterproof out? I'm too wet now. What's the, what's the point of putting it on? <laughs> and and so it just got to stage, you know, and I just got so wet and then dried out and then I think just before, sort sort of when we got to not the last checkpoint, probably the penultimate checkpoint or so, and it's the when it just before it started getting properly dark, it literally rained as you said for about three hours, really really heavy, mm-hmm. um, and I was thinking it was just as you started to go into the night, isn't night it? time, isn't yeah, it? yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and it just and that was when. I, you know, I got serious, started getting serious chafing on my back, which was incredibly painful from uh, from my bag, and and you know that's down to I, I can I swear that is just down to just getting wet. Yeah, usually just, is, usually is. Yeah, yeah. Um, was so wet, and then obviously the movement of the bag with the t shirt and stuff just just chafed the back, and uh, that became incredibly painful. And then then the feet, and so hindsight would be change shoes, change socks change t-shirt put a waterproof jacket on much quicker <laughs> <laughs> um and, you know so it's uh yeah it was, it was still quite uh, warm though wasn't it that day it was it, was, it wasn't it, no it wasn't cold it wasn't cold until the evening when it you know i think i got so wet I was, you, know, you can't and tired by that stage yeah. obviously 
um, that you know your body temperature drops whatever anyway so it, it's it's harder to stay warm and that's when you start risking your things like hypothermia which yeah. I've had ex- I've had ex- um, I, I've had before so anyway. um, yeah in days gone by so, uh, and that uh, and it, it's exactly that kind of stuff that I always say training runs sometimes they they just can't teach you this stuff um i've learned from my own personal running i've learned so much from the two dnfs i've had and you know all the other races i've done where you know you make those mistakes and that's the thing with ultra running it's very different to marathon running where it's pretty much all about get to the finish line pretty much as quickly as you possibly can um you know it's more about running economy vo2 max and um, all that kind of stuff. Whereas ultra running is, it's more about limiting the amount of stakes, mistakes that you make. Yeah. And and when you do make those mistakes, next time you go out there, you, you learn from them. You really do. They are such big yeah. lessons. And and you go, you're going back for another another crack at Race of the Stones, aren't you? Race of the Stones, yeah. And I'm, uh, I'm glad for punishment. I'm doing Race of the Kings. Race of the Kings? That is Race of the Kings, isn't it? Yeah. They, they yeah, got yeah. rid of the other one. Uh, Race of the Kings the month before. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so Andy's really yeah. testing my coaching ability this year by doing two 100 Ks in the space of a month. four weeks, isn't it? <laughs> and the Manchester Marathon and Manchester, yeah, yeah, which I'm I'm looking forward to. It's been uh, well, it's been a couple of years since we've run a marathon, so it's uh, it's going to be a oh, well, you run marathons within an ultra marathon, obviously, but it's that you know completely different thing in it. So different sport, um, yeah. Um and uh, it's been interesting. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Not necessarily looking forward to the training. So much. <laughs> <laughs> well, the good thing with you, Andy, and this is the thing I, I, I quite like about your season this year is that yes, we've got a road marathon to focus on, and if you were doing a pure road marathon block, yes, we'd need you out on the road hitting the pavement, but. You've also got two trail 100Ks after yeah. that as well. So we're going to mix your training up. Um, the good news is that there's some good science out quite recently that shows the trails running. Trail running is very good, uh, very beneficial for road running. So, yeah. you know, it's not going to impair your uh, – I don't think it's going to impair your performance at all. And in fact, I think it's going to, going to help you because um, trail running strengthens you up in different ways and um, actually protects you a little bit as well. Oh, would- yeah, I would, I would, I, I would sort of agree with that because at the end of the day, I always find, you know, when you, if you've done a bit of running on trails for a while, and then that first run back on the road, you feel so much quicker. <laughs> you do, you do. Cause trail running is, yeah, you know, so much oh. easier <laughs> in one yeah. sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's um, um, but yeah, so I'm looking forward to it in in a lot of senses. Um, not sure what's going to happen the second half of the year yet. We're we're ready until July. But <laughs> yeah. We'll, um, we'll get the rest. And what is it we're targeting for Manchester? Sub four. I'd like to hit a sub four. I'm not worried about any other time. But um, um, if I don't hit it, I'm not one of those people that are like, I have to do it. You know, it's like as I said, like at the end of the day, part of the running you're about. A lot of the running for me is just the experience of running and doing it um, but, and how it makes me feel. Having said that, though, and and you, just on that point, actually, yeah, there's a few of us in the group that say, you know, we all still run for our minds. It just so happens that our asses follow. Um, yeah. But based on your, you did a, you've done well, a couple of races before Christmas and based on the times that you did, um, even based off those, you're, you're looking in good four hour shape. Um yeah. as long as you stop stop catching COVID and getting ill. <laughs> and I think, you know, I Along suppose we everybody else. Back, well, yeah, we'll go back a little bit in terms of what you know, that that's part of I think part of the reason why I've put on so much weight over the last what, six months. Basically it felt it's felt like since September. Yeah. I had like ankle injury, I injured my ankle at work. Um, so that yeah. took me out for a few weeks. <laughs> then I got sick at the, in, at the end of October, uh, which took me out for like three weeks. 
Yeah, it was a long time. And and I must admit, it was that you know I haven't been ill. Had COVID properly once two years ago, um, and then I haven't been ill since. And then that was my first illness for a long time. And then to have COVID, then get COVID again, like uh, just over Christmas. I think it's it it affected me mentally as well because yeah. it brings back memories of of you know teenage you know, times with, with with chronic fatigue and and my energy levels the way I was. Um, and I think it it's amazing how your mind works and it starts to affect you in different ways. And I think you know the one thing I you know, I find with running it's really helped to clear my mind. Mm. Um, and it's why I, I quite like it and why I quite like to run without anything in my ears either. Um, so I can actually just listen to myself and yeah, have conversations with myself really. Um, less so on the speed work those days. I need something to get me going. Yeah, those, those days, days you're just running up, up and down a hill going, Nick, you fucker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, but, um, on the days when I'm on a long run, like I won't listen to anything. I just like literally listen to myself and have those conversations with myself and uh, you know and I think you know needed a couple of the conversations because of sort of over the last few months has really put on weight because I've probably been eating I've been definitely comfort eating um winter as well obviously um but uh you know it, it's tough you know when you when you haven't been ill for so long and then you get two quite big what I would classify as fairly serious illnesses in my mm. mind you know normally i'll shake off something within you know cold within a couple of days but these are really and even now i you know i'm still a little bit chesty and a little bit things which yeah i'm looking at my long runs like my 10 miles that we did on, i did on saturday and i go like the last four miles i just actually hated i felt like i had nothing left in my lungs at all um and you know you go and it's it's amazing how quickly your your fitness when it affects you like that it affects your uh, your fitness it feels like it affects your fitness I know it builds back up quite but as you as, well, but. as you've learned from you know when you did your ankle at work not in training at work yeah yeah <laughs> um you know that first illness you got you bounced back quickly from both of those yeah yeah you know quite um, quickly you were back up to go do you know what that felt good i felt like yeah yeah and i think i think even and even now you know thinking about like the the fact you know what are we uh it's only two weeks back into running two three weeks mm -hmm. two weeks back running three, yeah. and oh uh, you know did a 10 miler and a six miler yesterday and you know hitting the mileage again and yes i found it hard and yes my heart rate i'm fit i'm not as running it as, as an easy pace my my pace has dropped a bit but i'm getting them done <laughs> and and sometimes it's you know and i'm trying to keep my heart rate down which is obviously going to help build that base fitness back up which is keep your easy you know, runs easy you know you know yeah. you know my you know my drill yes yes you, you did tell me off at the beginning <laughs> <laughs> as i do everybody um, andy yeah yeah 99 yeah, of the people that come to me even really experienced runners and if he's listening simon who i who I coach, he's, he's a world level triathlete. Um, he's doing it arc of attrition in two weeks time. Mm -hmm. you know, I had to say to him, you're not going to do arc of attrition, arc of attrition at seven minute mile pace. You need to slow down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah, yeah, don't worry. It's everybody. No, it's keeping, it's keeping that. It's like I was chatting to my mate today and like I was showing him my uh, heart rate monitor for uh, yesterday, you know, everything in green, which is like your zone two sort of thing. Um, and, um, and he was like, I could just run for my, I could run for it all day at that. And that's the whole point of easy runs, right? Is you should be able to just run and run and run and be comfortable. Have I lost you? Again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know we we went a bit uh, sketchy then, but yeah, you're saying that sort of yeah. that zone one, zone zone two is it's kind of what I would call your is... um, your all day pace. You know, yeah, like you could run all day. Yeah, uh, not pace. Yeah, and that's exactly what. Yeah, my back might make the pace. Yeah, let me correct myself there because I always say easy is not a pace; it's an effort. 
you know, because one day that easy effort might mean a 10 minute mile, that effort, another day yeah. it might be a 12 minute yeah. mile. So yeah, it needs to go by effort. But um, you know, I've seen what you've been posting on your yeah. Instagram recently, um, you know, with your food, you're back to, um, you know, back to eating super healthy and back, doing all the right back, things, you know. Back to eating super healthy, back, yeah, weight's dropping off again. Lost, lost about a kilo this week, past week, which is I'm pleased about. Um, yeah. Um, that's one but thing you when you're big. To if you start well. eating healthy. Yeah, exactly. So I'm still using my gel, still eating properly. So like when I go out for a long run beforehand, I don't believe in cut. And, you know, I'm not one of those sort of people who go low carb, low carb, low carb. You know, when you're doing what we do, you know, mm-hmm. it's fine. If you don't do anything, you're not active, fine. Cut out some of your starchy carbs because you're not probably being active enough as it is. But, you know, and just focus on getting loads of fruit and veg into you, you know, and, and, and your protein. But if you're doing stuff like we do, where you're doing, you know, long endurance, high intensity, if you're doing your speed work and hill work, you need to eat carbs. Like, yeah. And I think uh, definitely, yeah, and definitely one of my go-to things is, uh, uh, you know, this is something you, I think you put on your thing, you know, before the run. One of the things like pe- um, uh, peanut butter and jelly with uh, and a bagel is, is a great thing to have as, as before you run. You know? I love it. That's what I do. <laughs> yeah, that's one of my go tos for a long run. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. For a hard effort, if it's you know, early in the morning, I'll have a peanut butter, peanut butter and jam bagel. Um, yeah. Do you know what I found in the middle aisle of Aldi's? Roses nice. lime jam. Do you remember that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, they, I love it. They, now it's because it's Audi, right? So they they probably they bring back the old. Uh, oh, it's amazing! Uh, that you can't find anywhere. Else. Yeah, yeah. I have a wife though that makes her own jam, so. Uh, oh, nice. Uh, and, you know, she makes she's uh, she she likes to make those sort of things. So well, be, being yeah. a being a, a professional gardener, you're uh, you're yeah. very green thumbed, aren't you? And you've got your own. Yeah, uh, yeah. We've got a lot of allotment of stuff in there. Nice. Yeah, so. It's, Okay. So all, all the veg at Christmas was off the allotment, which was lovely. Um, yeah, it tastes so much better as well. Yeah, good. <laughs> um, but yeah. I've got a question for you. Okay. They say that Coca-Cola is the champagne for ultra runners. Does that mean, yeah. like, are you so sick of it now after all those years of, of necking it that you wouldn't go near it now on an ultra? No, nah, funny enough, I'm not. <laughs> I still drink it. I still will have it. I'm generally, if I have it now, I'll have one every now and then. It is always Coke Zero, but if obviously I run, to be honest, it's not really. I think I've had it once. I think I had it once when I on race the stones. Yeah. And the thing is, they have it flat, and I don't like flat Coke. Well, yeah, it's got to be flat. So I know it's got to be flat, but it, it doesn't taste the same. <laughs> it's well, like, no, you... and also it depends on the make. Yeah, a UTS. Ultra Trail yeah. Snowdonia, they didn't have flat Coke. They forgot to flatten it. So everybody was like, oh, I can't drink it. It's really fizzy. I was just gulping it down. People were looking at me like I was insane, but it didn't It didn't bother me. Um, yeah, no, I, I, to be honest, I'm, stomach, but... yeah, I, to be honest, I'm pretty much the same. I don't, like, I, I can drink fizzy uh, in the middle of a run, <laughs> like, or, or whatever, like, after a run, if I fancy, if I need a lift up, I will have a Coke or whatever. And just, I think it's just the sweetness sometimes. You know, you crave that sort of sweetness, even with the like having the zero, so you cut out the calories in that malarkey. Um, but you know, now to be honest, my go to is always water. I, I, I live on water now. Water and tea. Um, water and yeah. tea. Water and tea. I like, uh, still, I still need my builder's tea. Good. Um, Andy, um, before we start to wrap up, because um, you know, one of the, you know, it, it is in a, you know, an amazing kind of story going from, you know, having chronic fatigue syndrome, being di- diagnosed with that when you were younger, um, you know, losing all that weight. I know you've put a little bit back on now, but you know what? It is early January. A lot of that is going to just be holiday weight and it'll come flying off because it's water weight. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you're in no no state of panic at all. Um, uh, you've been out 
you, you've been flown out to places with um, with herbal life because you know whilst I must admit the herbal life thing probably isn't for me, but yeah. it's worked for you. So you know what what, yeah. what did you do with those guys? So so herbal herbal life was the reason why I lost all my weight. <laughs> um uh, my best basically i got involved because of my you know my best mate um i've known since we were 10 years old um he was always a a, a big guy but well no he actually when we were younger he was like a stick insect uh, but then when he went to university he found beer right <laughs> and you know he, he he ended up becoming quite a big guy he, and he was he got to the stage where he was training six days a week in the gym to then spend three days a week in the pub just to, and he was going to the gym just to maintain try to maintain a okay weight mm. um but you know he got involved he got in um introduced to the product he lost some weight and he said to me and like i said to you earlier he said to me like mate you need to do something about it because otherwise you know who knows where you're going to be and that with Doreen, with, uh, with Doreen's comment sort of hit home and yeah so so gave it a go and it's literally like you know i don't but I, I was quite skeptical you know i don't believe in shake diets um um but it really isn't a shake diet you know yes you have a shake for breakfast but it's you know m who doesn't most of the days now these days a lot of people have a smoothie of some form whether they make it themselves mm -hmm. or whether they I use have a smoothie most mornings yeah yeah yeah, um, and whether you use it using, you know, a protein mix or whether you make it yourself with a whole load of fruit and veg and stuff and you have no idea what calories are in there, what vitamins and minerals and everything in there. And to be honest, it can take you ages and cost you a whole load of money. So um, it's, it's just quick and easy. Um, and, yeah, it got me involved in that really. And uh, so, you know, um then went on to help my sister lose some weight and quite a few friends and family and yeah been doing that really and and sort of do it on and off depending on how I feel um you know ultimately I'd love to be helping more and more people uh because I do love the products I think the product's very good there's a lot of other products out on the market you know um and they don't the way, folks, this is not some some advert for Herbalife I I, no. I was just I, I know, and I have to, I have to interject because you didn't lose all that weight because of Herbalife. You lose, you lost all that because of you. Yeah, it just so happened that Herbalife was one of the tools that you used. Exactly, it's and that and that. Don't do yourself it, a disservice, Andy. No, no, but that, but I think what it was about it was it just enabled me and the way the support, the support that I got from my coach. Um, in terms of meal planning and, and the accountability it's a bit like you know using you nick you know mm. it's having that accountability having someone that knows what they're doing where to put training in make sure you're following what you're trying to do and your goals and help you reach your goals really and and, and that was very much what you know that's where it, you know there are loads of companies out there there's loads of people that help you know all these sort of things, yeah. but it's one. It's that what helped me was having that accountability, and I think a lot of the time, and that's the difference between if you're trying to lose weight and you're going and buying something like Slim Fast, for instance, off of the shelves. You're going and buying that, and you go, well, I'm just going to drink this. That's not going to give you. It's the same way as like I have a shake for breakfast, but then the rest of the day I still have to make sure I'm eating the right food because if I'm not, you. Just, still eat too many calories at the end of the day to lose weight you need to eat less calories right then you you, you need to burn more calories than you're consuming um and so yeah so yeah herbal life um, funny enough i'm going to birmingham in a couple of weeks um um with them um for a yeah. convention and there is a possibility i haven't told you about this yet nick but i will tell you now but there's a possibility i may be running i think 60 miles with them in uh september time um okay. because we're having there's a big yeah there's it but that's in september we've got plenty of time. Say, as, long, as long as you're not like oh that's um, gonna be like in, in may <laughs> oh god <next> week. 
<laughs> yeah, we've got a bit of time. Um, and I think it's going to be fairly easy because they're talking about doing it over four days. I was like, oh, we could run London because we're having a big convention in Manchester. You'd be like, um, no, 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 I'm going to do it now. <laughs> Uh, oh, yeah, I was like, uh, no, why can't we just do it in like run 70 miles in one day? Because like London to Manchester is like, what is it? Not that far, really. 100 miles, 100 and something miles. So I'm going to Google it now. Yeah. London um, to Manchester. Um, walking is 178 miles. It's all right. Yeah. A few days. Like a couple of park runs, yeah. isn't it? Well, after doing two back to back hundred Ks, you know, yeah, exactly. It's, it's, Pretty much, it's not good. it's not going to be too much. But um, yeah, I want to do that. But I think they've decided they want to do less for, um, to raise money for uh, they. You know, it's like a lot of these com- big companies. They have like the um, their charity groups and Herbalife do work with. Um, they they have uh, these things called Casa Herbalives, which are uh basically helps um child less fortunate children with um you know making sure they get the right amount and right nutrition and um stuff all around the world. We have two or three in the UK. Works with I think Action for Children is it? I think that's what the charity one of the charities. Mm-hmm. I think that's yeah, the charity yeah. here. We have one actually funny enough not far from me. Um and yeah so be to raise money for them. So I uh, you know gives me a good reason to do it. And it's running. Normally they do bikes. I'm not a bike. I don't like to cycle really that much. Uh, fair enough. Um, Andy, I, I would be remiss if I didn't ask you to tell the good people what it's like working with me as a coach. No. <sighs> That's a very hard question to answer. <laughs> no, it's brilliant. I, 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 th- I think, I think, you know, what I liked about when we first when we first contacted, what was it? I, I sent you a message on on Valentine's Day uh, uh, last year, wasn't it? Oh, how romantic! And, yeah, and you literally <laughs> you literally replied, and like I was just an inquiry, and you you replied that evening. I was like, that is impressive. Why, what, you, know, you why weren't you doing, doing something? With that? Uh, uh, um, why weren't you doing something? You know, hadn't you got plans? Oh, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember. Yeah, do you remember that. now? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And I was we, like, no, we, I'm, we, I'm just really sad. <laughs> I think we both were. We were just, you know, we, like, I was like looking for a running coach, and you were clearly not going out. <laughs> no, we're we're way past all that shit now. We'd rather just sit in and and uh, <laughs> get a takeaway, right? <laughs> yeah, have a McDonald's or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, but, but yeah, you know, and 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 then obviously we had the, we had the Zoom call, which went a bit wrong because my reception was rubbish. So we ended up doing it over the phone, if you remember, because where I was working, we had the rubbish. Um, but I think straight away, I, you know, I felt very comfortable comfortable with you, and I felt we sort of clicked. I think that's important, right? With any whenever you're working with someone closely and with coaching. Um, yeah, I think um, it, the way understanding was, where people are really. Yeah, the way I was kind of frame it is that all good coaches should be knowledgeable. You know, we're all pretty much going to get you to, you know, ideally to your goal. You know, a good coach will get you to your goal. We might have some certain nuances about us in terms of the way we, you know, the way we, um, you know, we we program your training or whatever it might be or certain beliefs around certain pieces of evidence but ultimately like the most important thing is the is the coach athlete relationship mm-hmm. that, that 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 for me is 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 absolutely the most important you know there's no good working with best coach in the world if they're a total dick yeah no. and you know and then i think you know the the uh, you know the difference between yeah, you know, obviously, I you know did the two marathons with it. You know, following a generic plan that they give you as part of your signing up to a marathon, and mm. I definitely didn't finish all the runs. I definitely like got confused. What does this mean? What does that mean? You know, how am I going to know what pace I'm going to be running at and all that yeah. malarkey? Because you don't yeah. get that. And I think that that is definitely one of the big things about you know with obviously with you is. 
a any questions you have you you you're never far from the end of a whatsapp message yeah. um and, and you know obviously you don't you can't always reply straight away but you're not that you never take that long to reply generally um unless you're on holiday which is understandable exactly um, but even then, um, I still reply. And, uh, my uh, wife's dismay. <laughs> well, yeah. you, you're trying to get away from the family, then, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. Just going to the bar. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and um, yeah, yeah. That and the, you know, and the way you, you know, obviously the weekly check-ins um, that you obviously used to do changed it a little bit recently. Um, the way well, the way we do it now, which, which I think is actually really good. Um, but, you know, but you're, you're also what definitely there, you know, and it's been a difficult last few months. And I think if I was trying to follow a generic plan for something now and I would go in, oh, damn, I've lost two weeks. Mm. I've no, I have no idea where, how I'm meant to build back in. Whereas the benefit of having a, a coach and, and, you know, you especially, you, you're very open and very willing to change things and, I think you you know one thing you do do is when things do go wrong you're you're very much a don't worry about it it doesn't it's not going to make much of a difference I always remember like you know you you know you've there's been times when I don't you know I'm too tired I don't want to do one of the runs I can't do one of the runs and you say missing one run ain't going to make any difference not in the grand scheme of things no no you know, know, yeah the whole those odd missed run yeah so you know it's it's and i think that's the difference you know it's having exactly like i said like you know like the herbal life thing is it's having that accountability if i you know yes i didn't really fancy going to do my six miles <laughs> didn't really want to but like a i knew i was going to talk to you today b we're having a, we're, on wednesday we would be having our uh, uh monthly uh video chat yeah. um and <laughs> it's like I fucking miss this one. That was another one I missed, and it's like I, I've got no real reason not to do it. I just don't fancy it, you know. So I went out, and you know what it's like. You, the, sometimes the best runs, or the times you feel the best after a run, is on the run after the the, the run you didn't want to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and you know, yesterday I came home and I felt so much better for it. I'm so pleased yeah. that I did it. My energy levels lifted. That's the funny thing is when you don't do anything, you can, you feel really tired. Yeah, yeah. Because as soon as you get out of the door and you start running, um, or any form of exercise, it doesn't have to be running. But this is a running podcast, and we are runners. <laughs> um, um, and uh, yeah, so uh, and you know, it just felt so good for it. And um, yeah. but you know, I think, that, but I really like how you changed it. Like you now, obviously, we you know, you don't do the the weekly voice notes that you used to do. Uh, obviously, we send we send you we send you a message, and then you still generally uh, follow up with those messages anyway each each week. But I really like I actually must admit that obviously this is going to be the second monthly uh, uh, Zoom chat that we're going to have. But um, I think that's I, I like that because I think it, you get a bit more in depth mm. into the training for that period of time. Yeah. And is you know I think partly one of the reasons why you said you wanted to change was the fact you like. Like if you're just doing a general bog standard base week, there's not going to be much to talk about in that week, is there? No, um, that's, that's the thing. I mean, I I am still um, doing the voice notes to people when it's needed, but yeah. like you say, like you know, if if it's just a like you say a bog standard base week where we're just building up some miles, there's not anything particularly specific going on. Um, no, what I'd rather do is have that that training data coming in over a period of time and then we get on a call. Um, I mean, I say to all you guys a monthly one-to-one, but I also say, do you know what, Andy? If you just wanted to get on the phone, because you're like, Nick, can we just talk about something? You know where I am. I'm always here. Yeah, um, yeah, exactly. You know, very, 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 very rare, usually just when I'm on holiday. Um, you know, do I do? Do we not speak every week? You know, it's, it, we're, we're yeah. always talking, and that's one of the things I really based maximum mileage on was I wanted that communication, that you know, that connection between the people I coach. It's not just you know, here's your training plan, go out and do some running. 
It's actually, can we work together? Can we converse? Could I have a, you know, an honest conversation with you? Um, you know, if something wasn't quite going the right way, let's say, you know, you were just missing loads of runs because you couldn't be bothered. You know, yeah. you know that I would have a fairly honest conversation with you and it would be like, yeah. come on, Andy, you know, I'm not going to gloss over this and go, oh, don't worry, you've missed another one. It's okay. It, it would you're be... Still gonna run, you're still going to run matches during yeah, three hours. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Don't worry about it. You, you know I'm going to be quite honest with you. And that's, um, yeah, that was something I, I always wanted to pride myself on. So, um, Andy, no, I, think, I, mean, I, think you, I think you do it very well. No, thank you. No, it's been great talking to you, Andy. Um, thank you for coming on the show. Um, thank you for gonna... asking me. No, no, no problem at all. Like I say, I thought your story of how you've you know gone from where you were to where you are now, running, you know, hundred hundred odd key kgs to a hundred kms. You know, it's uh, it's a pretty uh, pretty cool story. So, thank you, Andy. Thanks for listening to the Maximum Mileage Running Podcast. You can find more out about us at MaximumMileageCoaching.com. If you think you need help with your running and you think that either myself or Faye could be the coach for you, then drop us an inquiry. No uh, obligation whatsoever and we'll have a chat with you about your running. And there's plenty of resources on the website as well. And don't forget, you can join us on the Maximum Mileage Running Podcast Facebook group. Until next time. See ya. Bye. Bye.